Okay, I'm trying this once again. I've already attempted it twice, and I'll make this. So here I am. I'm recording uh, at the in the threshold of uh, the University of Southern Maine's library. Um, here we have um, the uh, border right between the outside world, what's often in a cliche way called the real world. Um, it's the, uh, the end of the outside world and the beginning of the inside world of the university. This is the library, this is the official place of study, um, this is the, uh, um, the map library actually, which is actually a very interesting place to be recording this outside of the Osher map library. Because what I'm trying to do here with this, um, with this work that I'm presenting for you today in a very brief way, in about 10 minutes, uh, and in general, is to talk about a location, a location that I'm calling uh, the threshold, and the, um, as an ontological location, I'm calling it uh, the uh, threshold scholar. So as an ontological location, the threshold with, in between the uh, formal beginning and uh, the formal end of the university, this threshold gives rise to what I'm calling the threshold scholar. And it's the threshold scholar who is the one that is testing the faith of the university, the unconditional uh, university. So when Derrida talks about the university without condition, I'm suggesting that it's the threshold scholar who tests uh, the faith that we have in this uh, university without condition. Do we have, uh, is there such a thing as a university without condition? This is the question. How would we know? By testing, testing the border, testing the threshold, being in the threshold. So what does this mean? Backing up, the symposium was organized um, around the idea of hospitality, Derrida's work on hospitality, and the title of the symposium is On the Inhospitality of the University, Locating the Play of Differences and Diversities in Higher Education. And the symposium of papers were gathered around this year's conference theme, the American Educational Studies Association conference theme, What Counts as Diversity and How Does the Category of Difference uh, Relate? I'm drawing on Derrida's one of his fundamental, the fundamental category of difference. Difference, which he uh, develops out of, uh, and for my, my reading of Derrida, comes out of his, his uh, reading of Heidegger, is, is part of the critique of metaphysics and part of the closure of metaphysics. So what, what, what difference offers us is the ability to indicate where systems of thought, metaphysics, invoke closure, and also difference attempts to show the way out of closure and out of systems of closure by locating cracks or portals and pathways indicated by the traces of the contradictions in these systems. So difference is this, this concept that Derrida deploys to show that moment, this threshold, the threshold of the in-between uh, and the contradictions of the inside and the outside uh, uh, purportedly of these systems. So the official in and out, we place ourselves in the midst of that and we locate ourselves in the play of difference and we see the traces of the contradictions. Now, what do we do when we're in this uh, space? This is what my, um, my, my, my writing is about and this is what my question is rating. I, I am, I'm trying to suggest that um, the, in this space, in this place of the threshold, we can raise the question of the foreigner, the question of the one who's always arriving from the outside and moving into the inside with new questions. Now, there's a lot of work that this, 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 this notion of bearing the question of the stranger does for me because it suggests that as we move into this place, this library, this official uh, beginning of, of, of the university, we're arriving with the fundamental question of study. Right, so bearing the question of study and learning. So it does a lots of work uh, for me, this, this, this persona of the foreigner uh, who arrives and demands hospitality. What's important in Derry does lectures on hospitality is this covenant, this, this idea, this norm of hospitality that the stranger both understands and therefore can demand uh, from, from his or her host. So if the university is the host, the university is hosting and, and welcoming uh, this foreigner, this stranger, this persona who bears this question that they should make 
that uh, their space should be hospitable to all questions, to every question. And this is part of what Derrida raises in the uh, lecture on the university without condition. It's a sense of saying everything and being uh, uh, and daring to publicly say everything. And this gets us to uh, the idea of the, my, my writing, which is the notion that the foreigner's question or the question of the foreigner that arises in the threshold is the question that tests uh, the uh, unconditionality of the university. And so, how does this happen? Well, first it happens through what Derrida calls the profession of faith, the philosophium profetere. And this is this profession of faith that one must enact publicly, to give oneself over to philosophy, to bear witness for it, to fight for it. The promise is pledge which must be done publicly. To profess consists always in a performative speech act because the act of profession is a performative speech act. So here we have then the profession of faith, the profession of faith as a public performance of a faith in philosophy, in, a, in, in not simply in a theory or a performance, but in philo the spirit of philosophy to question. So I understand there at point here to mean that what we need if we're going to uh, enact the uh, profession of faith require us to do things in an experimental manner and therefore we would be testing the unconditionality of the university without condition. And this is the persona of the threshold scholar. Um, in my writing I try to use alternative forms and the alternative form that I'm taking in this writing is the thesis. Um, the thesis is simply a fragment or a singular statement that uh, articulates a hypothesis or an idea. It bears uh, the spirit of the question, but it's also a bit of an assertion, so it's a hypothesis. And the idea is to elicit thinking. The paper, the writing, is organized around uh, um, um, tens of theses that I then uh, articulate in between. Um, for example, thesis four, the in-between of the threshold scholar is the distinct hour of consciousness where she dwells in the studio, she or he dwells in the studio. Now, in writing uh, and articulating my work in the form of the thesis, I'm deliberately calling to mind um, one of many uh, forgotten forms. Um, and this one in particular is important, and this is part of a larger project that I am developing called the Project of Originary Thinking, Originary Philosophy. And, one of the, and the, the Project of Originary Philosophy has a, both a retrospective and a prospective uh, uh, gaze. In its retrospective gaze, the uh, Project of Originary Philosophy is looking back to ancient and forgotten forms of philosophical writing um, and trying to recover those and so far as it then will initiate something new and that's the perspective gaze. And some of the uh, forgotten uh, uh, forms of, uh, of ancient philosophical writing are, are the fragment, are the verse, are the dialogue. Um, and something that's a little bit more recent in history, but still forgotten, is the writing of the thesis. And it comes out of the scholastic disputation uh, uh, model of, of working through questions, which again is another forgotten form. And what I'm thinking in particular here is the work of Martin Luther. And he, Martin Luther, is, uh, uh, if we were to give and explore some examples of the threshold scholar, is an important one, because Luther, um, of course, produced the famous theses uh, that were protesting um, uh, the corruption of the church. He represents a kind of, uh, uh, his work, the writing of the theses and the public uh, uh, um, or, uh, announcement of this, um, of his theses, the, putting them on the cathedral uh, door in Wittenberg, um, are, ex are an example. So um, I'm, in writing uh, the work in the form of the theses, I'm, I'm ca calling to mind Luther's work in particular uh, and, and trying to invoke the spirit of Luther um, to a certain extent. I mean, I think that if I were to uh, go back, uh, move forward in the project, the theses would have to be, if they were going to be in the spirit of Luther, much more cutting and much more uh, critical. And in fact, this is probably the next stage of this work for mine, because if we're going to talk about the threshold scholar, is questioning the faith of the university. It's not simply invoking experimental forms, although this is very important in terms of turning towards the aesthetic and the, the relation of the, of the beautiful in, in, in an exploration of the truth, but it has, there's a political, a very important political uh, uh, component to it. And that takes me back uh, to my, for my last point that I'm going to make in this presentation, which is that um, the work of the Threshold Scholar, and something that I'm emphasizing here, is that the, uh, is the work 
the testing of the faith of the university is a testing of the faith of academic freedom. So part of what I do in this writing is to go back and try to recover uh, the, what I call the beginning of this university without condition that Derrida is referring to. And what is that beginning? Well, this all began um, over uh, a thousand years ago at the University of Bologna, or so I, I want to uh, make as a hypothesis. And at the University of Bologna, with the scholar Irenaeus, his students um, were studying the Justinian Codex, uh, the, the, the laws of Rome, which had been rediscovered uh, in the early part of the 12th century. They were issued um, uh, the uh, promise that they would be allowed to study this. Now, this is important because the promise in the form of what's called the, the, what's the Habita, issued by uh, uh, Theodorus in 1158, I believe, um, and I document this here in my writing, gave these scholars the right to study without any external uh, control over their work. They were free to pursue uh, their work. And what's important is, is that the Hapita was issued in particular because many of the students that were joining Arrhenius at the University of Bologna were coming from abroad. And this is an important uh, idea in, in Derrida's work. It's this idea of arriving from abroad, coming from abroad, uh, making one's way into the space and therefore demanding the right to raise the question and the right to study. And so the students that were coming from different parts of Europe, uh, so this is Italy, so Germany, uh, France, and England, um, were given the right to be present there and to study without, uh, for, without the Italians or the Bolognese in particular um, having a say in how they should be studying. And, and there's all sorts of uh, 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 rules that they were exempt from. And this is important because I want to argue that if we go back and we study this moment and we look at this moment, we'll discover something very important about academic freedom. And that is another thing I want to recall. So I talk about uh, academic freedom as something that we talk so much about in the university and we often raise as a concern, but I think we need to tie this together uh, in, in terms of experimental work. So it's one thing to talk about academic freedom um, as something that, you know, we should be, uh, our work should be protected, but I want to use Derrida in the spirit of Derrida to talk about testing the faith uh, or the limits of academic freedom. So our work, I want to suggest, particularly in philosophy of education, is to do this, is to experiment with and uh, push the boundaries and to dwell within the threshold uh, uh, in between what is uh, considered to be acceptable or the uh, formal space of learning and study and the informal or outside space. So where, where, where that meets. So in philosophy of education, again, is a particularly important place to do that because it's that particular location where we raise questions about study. We raise the questions about learning. We raise the, the fundamental questions about study and learning. And therefore, I would argue, and what I'm trying to suggest, is that the philosophers of education are the ones that need to push forward experiments in this work and therefore test the unconditionality of the university without condition. And yes, that, that, that's going to do it for me. And hopefully, um, I've been able to capture this. A performance enactment of the Threshold Scholar, and uh, I hope that I can also be with you um, on Friday via Skype. If not, good luck and thank you so much for listening.